The stage has been set. It's Super Bowl 48. It'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo here with Will Lupardis at Trump National. Another great place to come to watch the Super Bowl. Always beautiful here. Always beautiful here. That's very true. Now, we've got a lot to get to today, including Super Bowl Sunday. Um, Will, we've got a, a new website that we're talking about, though. I've heard Our about website. this great website. There's yes. a lot going on in this new website. There is. You can now watch Playing the Field mm -hmm. at playingthefieldtv.com. That's the That's new right. website. And in addition to the website, you can also see us on RPB TV, yep. Cox Cable, Verizon, and Time Warner. Just check your local listings. Yeah, and the yes. website will have those. Uh, the website will have everything, including a lot more stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So go see those interviews and yeah. a show on there. Go see us. Now, there's also going to be a very historic game at Dodger Stadium coming up, which we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to see Wayne Gretzky the other day, which is always fun. Always fun. And there's going to be a new segment called Ask the Insider, right? And we'll have a chance to talk to different writers and uh, reporters that are always following the teams in L.A. And we're going to see what specifically they have to say about uh, all the things going on in L.A. sports. You're kind of an insider when it comes to our NBA, Thank though. Thank yeah, you. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might be the football insider, but Will's kind of the, he's kind of the basketball insider. And there's a lot going on in L.A. sports right now, Will, isn't there? That's right. Uh, the Lakers and Clippers are kind of, you know, going in two different directions right now. And they are. We're going to talk about how far they're going in those directions. Yes, we definitely are. And, but first of all, the, the very big story this week for us is Clayt Kershaw signing a huge deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers, the highest paid pitcher in baseball. That's right. L LA Dodger fans can breathe a sigh of relief yes. because they've got Clayton on the mound for the next seven years. Yes. And he's got one of the most lucrative contracts ever in sports. It, he'll be playing for the Dodgers, hopefully for the next seven years. $215 million. Yeah, it comes out to like that? 30 million a year. So per game, I tried to break it down. It's it's way too much it's money. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. lot. <laughs> it's, it's worth it. I mean, he's Clayton's Clayton's He's Clayton great. Kershaw, right? We used to talk to Clayton when he was about uh, 20 years old and yeah, taking like, the bus to Dodger Stadium. Yeah, he was like making minimum wage, right? Yeah. Well, congratulations to Clayton Kershaw. We love you and we're glad that you're going to be in LA for a very, very long time. That's for sure. Yes. All right. Well, we have got to talk about Super Bowl Sunday, Will, because those games last weekend were amazing. And I am really excited to see if Peyton Manning can get his second Super Bowl ring. That's right. Um, the story, I feel like, is around Peyton Manning. It uh, is. But then it quickly became kind of the yeah. Seahawks uh, Yeah, they sort of took it over, didn't they? Richard Sherman. So, oh, my. So what do you think the biggest story in the Super Bowl is going to be? Peyton chasing his second Super Bowl ring or or the fact that there's a cornerback on the other team that's going to try to stop that from happening? It's got to be about Omaha, Omaha. Omaha, It's got to okay. be about Peyton Manning for sure. I think the Richard Sherman story kind of started with the championship game. And even though, you know, he's a very educated guy. He went to Stanford. Right. He's a nice person. But when you are on the field at the end of the game and the media comes up to you, and I'm not going to lie, if I went up to somebody and they went off as a reporter, I'd be excited. I would be really excited. I'm glad you said that because that's that's my take on it. I think yep. a lot of people are trying to decide how they feel about this guy who's yep. kind of, he, he was already a great player, but not in the public eye like he is now. Exactly, a lot he of played for Seattle. Nobody really knows anything about the Seahawks. True, and a lot of people judged him really quickly and this became a really national quickly. story. But, you know, I think that there's two ways to look at it. And that is that there's a lot of young kids that look up to, to athletes. They and do. Do we, do we want that to be the reflection of, a, of an athlete having success? But I also think I agree with what you said, and that's that we send report or we see reporters go yeah. to the hero of the game right. at the end of every game, and what do we expect? Them to say something we've never heard before, but what is it usually? It's usually, we, you know, we worked really hard, and we we're really to excited the, to be here, yeah. and he we, didn't do that. We clamped down on defense, <laughs> you know. We really stuck with what the coach told us to do. We really yeah. played as a team tonight. Exactly. Well, or we, we had, just didn't get the job done, but we're going to really try harder tomorrow. Well, we don't like that when you guys <laughs> say that to don't us. Like that. You guys don't like that. So finally, a guy says something that's yes. out of the box, and everybody flips out. So I like a guy who's on a super big high for a moment right and Aaron Andrews catches him at that at moment that time, and here we are and, and you know he, he also went off on Ed Werder as well people don't know this but he went to the second reporter right. and he, he equally kind of went off with Ed Werder but what I like the most is that today he came out and he apologized he just said you know I I, it, I was emotional it was the heat of the moment mm -hmm. I was excitable it had just happened. I mean, it had just, that play had just happened. And I like what he apologized for. He, he didn't, he apologized specifically for not thanking his team and propping Ex his team up. Exactly. And Making it about him. Michael Crabtree. Right, exactly. Well, Michael Crabtree, he's a pretty good receiver, but 
if you if if you knock the guy off like that, you it's know, gonna happen. I think you have a right to kind of say Get something. Get a little about upset. It, right? Okay, let's just go to the fact that they say that defense wins championships, mm. but offense wins games. So how is that gonna gonna come out? Seattle, number one defense. Denver, number one offense. Mm -hmm. Who is gonna win out? Without you, giving your prediction. I don't want to give my prediction not just yet. yet. Not yet. Spoil Wait everything. till the end of the show for that. Well, I think that, you know, consistent defense, like the Seattle Seahawks have, have shown they can play, consistent good defense has is, is gotten them to the Super Bowl, obviously. That's right. Consistently good offense have got, has gotten Denver there. I think it's going to be a close game. I don't say who I think is going to... Not yet. Gonna We're going to save each that other till later. Yet, but I just think it's going to be close, and I don't, I don't think that... Um, it's going to be a high-scoring affair, but I think, I think so. Payne's going to get what he usually does. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's going to be sort of experience versus inexperience, though. Right. One one person who's been there. There's also a a 12-year gap between these two quarterbacks in age. Russell Wilson's 25, Peyton Manning is 37. So you know he's had a lot more experiences, winning and losing. Mm -hmm. So I think he's going to be a little bit more settled. Another little fun fact, Maria, is that um, Russell Wilson as a teenager, attended Peyton Manning's football camp. How crazy is that? Yeah. He probably had a poster of him in his room, too. Probably, yeah. That's, yeah. I that, mean, it is Peyton Manning. He, it, yeah, he's, he's probably exactly. the best quarterback of all time. I think we can say that now. I think he's one of, for sure. And if, here's another funny thing. He's going to be playing, in, of course, in New Jersey, in MetLife Stadium, mm -hmm. Eli's home, his brother's home. Sure. That is bizarre. And he's going to want to win there because, well, well yeah. Eli went into uh, – the Indianapolis Stadium. And yeah, exa and oh, exactly. He You're won the Super Bowl good. in Peyton Manny's, Manny's home. Wow, that's so. Right. I think that's another incentive for Peyton to win in his brother's home because you know who yeah. wants your brother to come you and yeah, win in your house. It's already bad enough that his brother's got two rings and he only has one. Yeah. So you know. That's a good point. So two and two, you got to keep. The yeah, family. it's got to be even. Can you don't want to be the the least loved son, you know. No. So. Can you imagine what dinner must be like when they all get together? It must be a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, it probably is. I like. Maybe we can like. Can we arrange that? Get that on playing the field. Maybe <laughs> that would be really fun. Just a dinner with the Mannings. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Okay, it's going to be in New York. Uh, the weather could be an issue because they say the high is going to be 32, and the low is going to be 22. So yeah. that's you, that's really cold, Will. I mean, how how does that fare for for both teams? Seattle, it's just rainy. It's not too cold. Not that cold. Denver gets pretty cold. I guess they have a slight advantage there. But, you know, I think that uh, the Super Bowl, I don't think they're going to feel the cold. I think the best team is still going to win despite slow, snow, sleet, ice, 20 degrees, whatever it is. It's going to be fun to, for fans to look at a, uh, you know, a freezing cold Super Bowl because that's really hasn't happened, I think, since the 60s. So. I know. It's going to be exciting, that's for sure. I'm excited to see it. And I hope it snows. Let it snow a little bit. Let you it know? snow, let it snow. Let you it like snow. the ice bowl. Except the Cowboys won't be there. All right, <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk a little hoop action. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The ball pressure, I thought, changed the game. Um, you know, I think what, the first five minutes, both teams were just going up and down. Um, and then I thought our ball pressure literally changed the game. Uh, Malik and Darius, you know, picking up the pressure. Um, you know, they, they have, you know, let's just be honest, they have so many injuries. You know, Kendall's really their only real point guard. And so, you know, when they had to sub him out and we could put pressure, you know, they have their twos trying to bring it up. And it's so what we're doing at times is. Oh, man, you know, Blake's played phenomenal. Um, I think, you know, the ability that Doc has put into the offensive system, you know, as, as far as like moving the ball from side to side is, is really opening up for him. You know what I mean? There's some times where he can take the open shots, but he'd rather be in selfish, swing to the other side, set another screen, and then he'll then he'll take that shot. You know, so we hit first, and then they came back and, and, and took control of the game, and Coach challenged us at halftime to just really go out and compete, play with that spirit. I thought Chris did an excellent job getting us going, and, um, you know, we just never looked back from there. Uh, no, that was that was fun. Um, you know, I, I was obviously out a long time, so the worry was that I would just it would take a little bit of time to kind of find a rhythm um, and to get into a rhythm in the first four minutes was surprising but very nice. Kobe, what was it like for you to be out there when you first got out in the court and you were playing again? Uh, weird. It's really weird. Um, I think the last time I had eight months off, I was still in the room. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds <laughs> good to get out there. I have to adjust, I think, a little bit because, um, you know, with Kobe and myself back, I mean, Kobe back, uh, we're going to probably have to slow a little, beat the game down, and, um, you know, until we all 100% healthy and, and, and ready to go. So, um, 
So we have to make those those adjustments as we go along, uh, uh, because you know it's, it's going to be difficult to, for us to keep up a pace, uh, up and down, running and, and gunning. Um, you know, just you just have to make those adjustments. Well, as you can hear from the remarks from both the Lakers and the Clippers, it's been a very different first half for each team. The Lakers being hit by the injury bug, but the Clippers moving in a positive direction with Doc Rivers at the helm. It's been crazy at Staples Center, Will. That's right. We've seen the two teams match up a couple of times, and the Lakers' uh, opening night came yeah. out and beat the Clippers. They and did. Like, is this not the... That, team was, that we signed up to, no. you know, Doc Rivers is a championship coach. That, that was like the best game that the Lakers have played, by the way, so far. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Lakers are, are, are definitely not looking like a playoff team, but um, they've showed positive signs. They, they have. They, they went into Boston on the big Grammy road trip. They beat Boston. Thank God. They, uh, they beat the Toronto Raptors. Um, you know, and Kobe is on this trip just in a suit every day. I know, and so I'm glad that he's there because some people said he wasn't going to show up to games. He is showing up to games. And oh, sure. He's there for the players, which is good because they're all young guys. In fact, I call it Pal Gasol in the D League, you know, because really we they, don't know a lot about the rest of the guys that are playing right it's now. It's funny because, you, you know, they've had some moves from the front office that have gotten them in this position, but I also think they picked up some players like uh, Kendall Marshall right. and um, and certainly Nick Young, Nick Young that have really, really added some, some good offense on the floor. So there's promise for Laker fans with those guys, but, you know, but it's tough. let's be honest, Gasol may not finish his career here. They might have to use him to... Right look toward the future so that's that's the plight that the Lakers fans are looking at right now um, and, and, I, and I don't think a playoff run is really what you want this year you want to kind of look for some younger talent to get in the draft and you know and I don't think it's fair to young players like Ryan Kelly and even you know what even to Mike D'Antoni who's doing the best job that he can do I think he's the right coach for this team I don't mm -hmm. he's a nice guy but you know, he's he's not comfortable in this position. The players are not comfortable making that last shot at the end of a game to win a game. So it's this has been really tough, really and, tough for the Lakers. And, and I know that Maria needs a nice guy as a head coach. She, I, she will what? not put up with anybody but a nice that guy is as a head not, coach. That is not true. So I want him to be mean get, and nasty, no. and I want him to get out. There. Doc Rivers is a nice guy, he's and very nice, yeah. he's a great coach. We well, love Doc. Well, let's talk about the direction about the, Clippers. the Clippers are yeah. moving in because because do Doc came over the summer and mm -hmm. uh, if you've seen any part of the first half of, of the NBA you know the Clippers have have, have kind of just kind of they're not sort of tread, a little better than treaded water I right. mean they're in the number four position and they stayed that way they're in a good place since nearly the beginning of the season right. um, however they're not showing the you know the tenacity the I don't I don't think it it's taken them it's, coming. it's taken them a little bit to, yeah. to subscribe to Doc's system right it, it, it it's possible it's so intricate and, and and something so foreign to them that it's taken a little time for them to catch on well what I think has been a positive thing is uh, the injury to Chris Paul that he had around the new year it, it's making Blake Griffin really come out Chris Paul's a leader Chris Paul is the star on the team he is. even though we have Blake and we have a bunch of other great components but Blake's defense now is out of control I love watching him he's play. playing at an MVP level he's, he cer he's certainly showing the league that he's the best power forward and the fact that Chris Paul is out and Darren Collison is is the point guard nobody's right. really the captain nobody's no. really the leader that I think that allows Doc Rivers system to, to really absorb into mm -hmm. these guys and then you know Chris is looking to get back around the all-star break in fact he said that he would love to be able to play in the all-star game because he started his career in New Orleans oh wow that's where the so game's gonna something. be mm -hmm. and that game is about February the 16th I think it's coming up so that would be right at the Six week mark, really, of his injury. Now, we don't want him to. I was just going to say, it. I'd rather kind of <laughs> that he doesn't play in the All Star yeah. game and just let him come back to the Clippers so we can get back on track. Right. But even players like Matt Barnes and JJ Reddick, and every night DeAndre Jordan, somebody else is stepping up, and that has been really fun to watch. Maria, that's a good guy to bring I love up. It. DeAndre Jordan's a big yes. reason they have won. Uh, a He's lot of the games without Chris. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. They've all kind of looked for their, their moments to uh, take up the slack. That's you know, right. Fill in, yep. the, fill in the spots where Chris isn't the penetrator or, or he's not dishing the ball off. So they found their, their moments, and DeAndre's certainly become uh, – DeAndre, the dunk artist, too, that, sometimes. Yeah, Blake and DeAndre have these great dunks, but they're so making it. their they're making their case for best power forward and best center in the league. In the league. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Who do you think their biggest competition is right now? If we were going to go into the playoffs tomorrow, which we're not, but who would it be? Well, Portland. Un unfortunately, there's not one team. The Clippers are beating all the teams they're supposed to, but they're losing to San Antonio. They've yeah. lost to Portland this year. Well, they better beat San they Antonio. They lost to Indiana, who is the best team in the league. Yeah. 
and um, I think they split with Oklahoma City. So we're really going to have to see the next time they play one of those teams that I mentioned to see really where, where they stack up because yeah. they're not beating the elite teams. They're holding their place in the West because they're beating everybody they should. So I would say all those teams, they're, they're, they're going to have to look in the eye and say, if we want to be a championship oh, they contender, have to play up, they for have sure. to defeat those kinds of teams. Right, and we're, it'll be interesting to see how the second half of the season goes for sure. Yeah, yeah. As a, you know, Doc, it's still his first year, and there's a lot of uh, defensive – Theories, I think he's trying to implant mm -hmm. in these guys. So hopefully, if, if you're a Clipper fan, you just hope that around March or April, everything clicks, Chris and everybody's healthy, and mm -hmm. send the Clippers in the playoffs with a good run. You know, I have to say, listening to Doc's press conferences after the game is my favorite part of the whole game because yeah. he is just so fun. He'll sit down, he'll talk about the game, and then he'll just talk about life stuff, which yeah. is really great. I just love Doc. He's really candid, and, and I, I, I think he, he understands um, the advantage when you open yourself up to the media mm -hmm. yeah. and um, you don't get hit as hard when times are bad and when times are good. I think they blew up uh, the team by about 30 or 40 points. Yeah. Might have been the Laker game. And yeah, uh, Doc started it talking about late, football. The second one. Right, started it was great. talking about NFL football. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how he opened the press conference. So he's a real comfortable guy to be around. And I think the players feel the same way about him. All right, when we come back, we are going to talk hockey at Dodger Stadium. That's right. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You know, it's really cool. Uh, and I looked out my window this morning and uh, there's a hockey rink going in on my infield, you know. I loved it. And uh, I think it's great for the region. I think it's great for the sport. I think it shows off Southern California to a whole nother market of people who will be curious to, to watch a game in a warmer climate than uh, the University of Michigan or, you know, uh, Edmonton or someplace that, that has uh, different types of weather than we do in December and January. But I think it's a great, a great time for the sport and it's great that we're able to host it here. The Dodgers and the Kings have long, had a long-standing relationship. Talk about that. Well, ever since I've been here, it may go back for decades, I'm not sure, but we've always had a, a real good relationship with them. And uh, you know, there's, there's a night that we'll host out here for, for them and their fans, and there's, there's nights at, at the Staples Center that they do likewise for us. So it's a great uh, relationship. We're, we're close in proximity. We don't play that far apart from each other. Uh, our seasons overlap a little bit at the beginning and the end of each, but by and large, it's when they're off and when we play and when and vice versa. So it's a great organization. Uh, I've known Luke Robitaille a long time, Dean Lombardi for a long, long time, and got a lot of respect for him and a, and a great friendship with him besides the respect from a business end. I mean, we've had a long uh, relationship with them. I mean, as far as I could, I mean, years back, I mean, I used to come and play the game with uh, with uh, Tommy Lasorda, I remember when uh, Orler Scheiser, who used to play hockey with us, and telling me, like talking, just when he had that, what was it, 59 innings uh, shut out, and I remember him talking to me, he goes, man, I think it was the first game, and everything's going really good, this is amazing, and you know, and then he broke the record and they won that year, so we've had that relationship, I mean, me personally with those guys since at least 87, 86, but uh, the Kings and, and the Dodgers have always had a great relationship, and uh, obviously with the new group with Mark and Peter Goober and Magic, and, and uh, I called Stan, you know, say, hey, could we do the game at Dodger Stadium? And, he, there wasn't even like a thought. He just said, yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it. It'd be fun. And then the next call was Ned Calais. He says, if there's an alumni game, can I play? <laughs> <laughs> so it, these guys have been great to deal with. They've been really easy. And as far back as Lon Rosen was doing the marketing here, they've been, they've been awesome for us, and they're great for the game. And that was Dodgers GM Ned Coletti talking with Luke Robitaille, of course, hockey great. Now, I am here with another great one, Jimmy Bramlett from JimmyBramlett.com. Thanks for joining us today, Thank Jimmy. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, Jimmy, you know everything there is to know about hockey, of course. And we're talking about, amongst other things, and we're talking about this very big game at Dodger Stadium. The first time they've ever done this on the West Coast. Of course, we've seen it on the East Coast a lot of times and in Las Vegas once. Uh, you and I were out there the other day for the press conference, and it, back, there was no ice down yet. No. No, no, no. No ice. But we're wondering, is the weather going to be a factor in this game? Absolutely not. Actually, that's, it's a misnomer that this is the first West Coast. It's the first West Coast regular season hockey game outdoors. At, at Dodger Stadium. At Dodger Stadium. Right. The Kings and the Rangers had one in Vegas in the parking lot of Caesars Palace in the preseason back in 1994. Wow. Temperatures got up to 90 degrees. There were locusts descending upon the ice. <laughs> It was Players a little, are going to love that. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. The, and there, there was some ice issues. But for the most part, it was playable for all three periods. Because it's a preseason game, they didn't worry too much about right. the, the conditions as they are now. 
of course, that was, what, 20 years ago. Technology is a lot better. It should go off without a hitch. And, and it seemed like everybody that was there, the engineers, really know what they're doing. And they're geniuses. They really are. I mean, talking to them was, was fascinating. Oh, yes. I mean, it's one of the first times at a press conference I've ever learned anything. Yes. I mean, it was amazing. That's pretty cool. That's, that's saying a lot. We go to a lot of press conferences. Oh, God, they're awful. We don't learn anything. No. None. No, this was this was was very cool. Of course, it's also very cool when Wayne Gretzky shows up. I think to anything because people sort of see him like this 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 god that falls out of the sky. He's just a nice, normal guy, but he's still Wayne Gretzky. Who looks like Steve Spurrier, the old <laughs> ball kinda, coach. He kind of does. does. Yeah, you know, does. just a more put together Steve Spurrier. Yeah. No, I mean he's a legend. He is. Okay, let's just face yep, it. He's he a is. legend. He's the reason we can do an outdoor game here in Los Angeles. He's exactly. the reason we have the Anaheim Ducks, why we have San Jose Sharks. Right. You know, he's just a legend. And it's funny that he played for the Kings about a million years ago, too. Oh, God, I know. It's been forever. It has, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I can count the white hairs. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he probably can too, actually. Oh, geez. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the Kings because a couple years ago, of course, Stanley Cup champions. What is it going to take to get them back? Because last year, I think everyone just thought they'll go back to back. That's very hard to do. It's really hard to do in this day and age. Mm -hmm. And the problem with the Kings right now, they're sort of in sixth place in the Western Conference. Problem with them is offense. Now, they're one of the best puck possession teams in the NHL. I mean, they hog the puck, you know, right. with their forecheck, with their uh, defense problem is they can't get the puck to the net. That's a problem. You <laughs> That's know? a bad problem. That's a schematic problem because, I mean, they have snipers like Jeff Carter. You know, they just called up Tyler Toffoli again from the minor leagues today. It's just they have a hard time scoring. Their power play is atrocious. It, you know, their power play has always been bad. But it's really, I mean, consider. <laughs> now it's really bad. I mean, it, they're, like, before it was, like, towards the bottom. Now they're, I think, 28th or 29th Not in the good. league. I mean, you can't be a playoff, a true playoff contender and have a power play that horrendous. That's true. Very true. So what's it going to take for them toward the end of the season to get back to the finals or back to the championship? Um, well, like what happened in 2011, 2012, they, they acquired Jeff Carter from the Columbus Blue Jackets right. and their offense just sort of melded right at yeah, the right time. It really did. And that's, I mean, unfortunately, that's what it's going to take. Their defense is always good. They'll keep them in games. Jonathan Quick will Amazing. keep them in games. Right. But it's just the offense that needs to click. All right. Now, the Kings are playing the Ducks, of course, at the Dodger Stadium game. Now, again, the Ducks playing great hockey. First Phenomenal. First place, yes. And, but then the end of the season last year, we didn't see them anymore. So what do they have to do to sort of stay there? Well, what's improved for them and why I think they can, they have a good chance of winning the cup this year, their defense has solidified. Their, uh, their young defenseman, uh, Cam Fowler, hmm? just picked for the Olympic team. Yep. You know, he's grown and I think that's the key for them. Just keep, because they have two, two of the best scores in the league with Corey Perry and Ryan Getzloff. Right. You know, just unimaginable weapons that they have. Now, their defense is starting to hold things together in the blue line. I think they have a good chance if they can avoid Chicago because Chicago gives them problems. They, they give everybody problems, oh, yeah. I think. They really do. So now, who do you think is going to win the game, most importantly, at Dodger Stadium? The Ducks. The Ducks. Although, the Kings this do give... This is a Kings city, though. The Kings do <laughs> give the Ducks problems. They do. They do. I don't know what it is. It's just in a rivalry game, yeah, you throw tough. the records out. You know That's that... That's true. That, total cliche that's true Should though do a cattle prod kind of like that. the kind of like the dodgers and the uh, diamondbacks right? yes. yes but it is what it is <laughs> that's right that's right it is what it is all right now since we've already talked about baseball and hockey in this segment we have to ask you since it's the super bowl what is your prediction for super bowl sunday seattle seahawks will atone for their prior super bowl loss will not get a stupid uh pass interference or yeah. unsportsmanlike conduct you know penalty there, yes no None of that. They will beat the Denver Broncos 31 to 14. It's going to be 20 degrees. Ooh. It's going to be snowing. It's going to be windy. Peyton Manning cannot perform in those conditions. You know, I'm kind of excited if the weather is really bad to see that. I, know I just that... want to laugh. <laughs> well, you probably will. All right, Jimmy, thanks so much for being with us Thank today. Thank you for having me. We will see you out at the game on Saturday. Yes. So we're going to have some more fun. And, of course, now we're going to go out with Wayne Gretzky, who talks about the Olympics and the hockey teams. We'll Steve be right Spurrier. back. But over the last 25 years, our game has grown so much that to pick one team 
to be able to win is going to be so difficult. You know, you look at the Finns are going to be tough. They just won the World Junior Tournament. The Swedes, you know, won in 2006. Um, the Czechs and the Slovaks always play together as a group even better than they do as individuals. And then, of course, you have Canada and U.S., two of the best teams in, in all of the world, two of the most talented teams. And then you have the home team of Russia. And Russia is going to be very difficult to beat. I know their players and their kids are really excited about playing on their home territory. They didn't have a particularly great 2010 Olympic Games in Vancouver. And I think they're really wanting to sort of um, jumpstart this Olympics and, and, uh, and um, correct the, the uh, poor showing that they had in 2010 in Vancouver. So there's a number of teams that can win. It comes down to the same thing all the time. The best goaltender, and if your best player is the best player on the ice and the best line on the ice, your team is going to ultimately be the gold medal winner. So um, I like a Canadian team. I think we have a lot of depth. I think we have a lot of um, great players. And to me, it's always an advantage when you're when the best player in the world is on your team. And I think Crosby is the best player in the world, and he happens to be on our team. Yeah, welcome back to Playing the Field. Now, Maria, it's the end of the show, so it's prediction time. Super Bowl prediction time. Yep. Okay, well, I'm going to go against the grain and say that this year, offense is going to win championships. I'm going to say Denver 17-10 to 10 over Seattle. I think that's a pretty good pick. Think so? Yeah. And What's we, yours? We, we usually disagree, but we I, do, I know. It's it's cold weather, and, and, I, and I think these are two evenly matched teams in, in a lot of senses, so I, I have Denver winning 24-21. to 21. And you think he's going to win because he's playing in Eli's house, right? That's one reason, yeah. That's good. I bro- love that one. Brothers are that's just, so you know, good. Like, what the... You know, fight him. It's fun. Fight while he's there too. It's fun. Russell's All right. little brother to the ground in the press box. <laughs> I do like Russell though. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's a really good yeah, guy. I, but I, not this year. It's I, gonna be Peyton. You know what? I might even throw in a, a, a little caveat to my prediction. Yeah. The Super Bowl goes into overtime at 21. <gasps> I don't. Has it ever gone into overtime? That's my prediction. Wow, Will. Are take you it gonna? To Vegas, you're, yeah. Or seriously, don't, don't or, or, or don't. But, but you know what? You can take it right here to Trump National. You can watch the game. You can golf a little bit if you like. This is a great place to watch the Super Bowl. Are you going to come here? I don't have plans here? yet. I think I might come. Well, you might. It's going to be a lot of fun here. To check out the uh, combina- combinations are good. Yeah. I'm yeah, and you can golf a little too. Mm-hmm. Are you working on your golf game? Uh, I need to come he's here. He's not. Yeah, he's no. he's really not. No, I've been playing a little basketball. <laughs> Just a little. I'm trying to get, you know, like take CP3's place if he doesn't okay. come back. Okay, I'm sure the Clippers will go for that. And on our next show, I have an interview with Mark Madsen, who is now a coach with the Lakers. And uh, he had some very interesting things to say, so I'm excited to show you that. Yeah, and don't forget to check us out 24-7 at playingthefieldtv.com. And I just want to throw in there that we're less than a month away from pitchers and catchers reporting to spring training, and Gino can't wait for that. So we're getting excited. It's almost baseball season. Can yeah. you believe that? Yeah, and it'll warm up here in, in <sighs> bru- the brutal cold of Southern California. I know. We need some it's springtime. Dipping below 60. It's just way <laughs> too cold here for us. That's for sure. And also, the IndyCar season is revving up, and we are going to ask you, the fans, who the face of IndyCar is for 2014. This is going to be a really fun segment. We want you to participate. And if you've never been to an IndyCar race, find one this year because it's a lot of fun. I got you involved. I you agree. Like it, right? I want to go to another one. It is. It's, it's, Take me. We're going to, okay. for sure. We're going to Good. definitely do that. And a very special thanks to our guest, Jimmy Bramlett, for coming in and talking about hockey. He, at 24-7, he knows everything there is to know about that game. I'll tell you that. He does. Yep. But in the meantime, just enjoy the Super Bowl here at Trump National. That's right. And we'll see you next time on Playing the Field. See you next time.